What's up guys, Michael Kamalu, AKA Dr. Gaines here. And next in line from my feedback form is the request for more chest workouts. So today I'm gonna give you one of my favorite chest exercises and I call it the triple failure pec combo. First, I'll show you how to do it. And then second, we'll go over why it's such an effective exercise by going over two important scientific principles that are incorporated in this exercise. The first is the lever fulcrum principle. And then the second is just touching briefly on the principle of failure itself. So here's how you do it. All right, guys, this is a killer combo where we're going to progress from a heavyweight power move to a middle ground to lightweight isolation, all within the same plane to really nail a muscle group. Now you can do this in a decline plane like I'm going to be doing here or a middle plane or an incline plane. Either one all works the same principle. So we're gonna start, put it at what's something heavyweight for you, like a eight rep max. And you're gonna go and get into your athletic stance and do some decline presses. Then you're gonna drop about a third of the weight and go into our half fly half press rotations. Remember you're going to get a bent arm and do a fly and rotate into a press. Fly motion, rotate. Then you're going to drop that about in half to a fly. And finish off with seven of those or however many it takes to failure. Now, first I wanna go over why I put the different parts of this exercise in the order that I did. And it has to do with something called the lever fulcrum principle. If you're not familiar with levers and fulcrums, then just picture a teeter-totter and the thing that it sits on is called a fulcrum. So simply put, the closer a weight or resistance is to the fulcrum, the easier it is for the lever to move it. And the further away it is, the harder it is to move. An easy way for you to test this yourself is to grab a dumbbell and work your deltoid in three different positions. Now, when you're talking about weightlifting, the fulcrum is the muscle. And then the distance of the resistance from the muscle is the lever. So first, we'll try putting that resistance right next to the fulcrum which is the deltoid, and then contract. It's pretty easy to push. Now, if I put that weight a little farther away from the fulcrum, then it gets a little harder. Now, if you extend the lever as far as it'll go, and you may not be able to see the weight there, but if you then contract the deltoid and move it straight up with the lever all the way extended, it's a lot harder. So. The further away it is, the more difficult it is to move. And this is not due to the 90 degree principle, which I discussed in my last video, because in each of the three positions, we're moving the weight in the same direction relative to the resistance. Resistance is gravity, down, I'm moving against it in all three positions, but it's easier close to the fulcrum harder, further away. So with the triple failure combo, we start in a position with the lever as short as it can be so that we have as much power as we can. It's as easy to move that way as possible. And that's with your arm right next to your pec and pushing down. Then after we've done as many of those as we can, we extend that lever by moving the resistance a little farther away from the muscle. And then finally, we have the lever extended as far as it can go, and you'll notice that you can only move a fraction of the weight as you could when your arm was closer to the muscle. There's another advantage to doing it in this order, and that's as you progress, you're steadily isolating the pec muscle. In the first position, when you're pushing straight down, you have many other muscles incorporated into that motion. Your triceps, for example, are pushing as you extend the elbow down. All of the other shoulder depressing muscles are assisting. Then 
when you move your arm further away, those muscles are not as involved. And then with your elbow completely extended, the triceps are not involved at all. And it is almost exclusively the pec muscles that are moving the resistance. Now, the last principle that I wanna to touch on here is that of going until failure, which just means doing as many reps as you can until your muscle essentially gives out. Now, you may ask, should you go until failure with every set in every workout? If you'd asked that question several years ago, it would have been a resounding yes. However, new studies have come out that dispute that in certain scenarios. And the real answer now is that it depends on what your goals are and what type of training you're doing. I'll go over all of that in depth, as well as the specific benefits of going until failure, including hormone releases that are triggered in your brain in a separate video dedicated specifically to this concept of going until failure. However, for now, just trust me that if your goals are to lose weight or develop lean muscle or bulk, then going until failure is something you absolutely need to incorporate into your workouts. It's not enough just to have a set of eight, 10, 12 reps that you're stopping at a specific point without incorporating at least some situations where you are doing absolutely as much as you can. Those last couple, even last single rep that you can do is often the most important in that workout. Now, there's one caveat that I wanna hit, and that is as long as you are maintaining correct form. One of the reasons why it's disputed whether people should try to go into failure so much is because inevitably they end up losing proper form. If, let's say it's a bench press, and instead of doing a slow, uh, correct form press, will start angling their back all sorts of ways and moving their shoulders around, and it can really lead to injury. So you should incorporate going until failure, but as long as you are maintaining correct form. Do not change your form just to get that last rep up. So as long as you're not doing that, going until failure is something that you need to incorporate, and guess what? In this exercise, you do it not once or twice, but three times in every single set. And as we'll go into detail in the other video, there are a lot of benefits that you'll be able to get from incorporating that in your workout. Guys, if you like this video, please give me a like, make sure you're subscribed and share with your friends. Until next time.